coming in hot, Change. How we doing, brother? Coming in hot, bro. Hey, happy 300th episode, dude. Yeah, let's go. Happy 300th, man. Let's go. Dude, can you believe we're at 300 episodes? That's I really incredible. can't. I really Sorry. can't. Jess actually even said yesterday, she goes, wow, 250 to 300 went pretty fast. And I'm like, yeah, we well, do it five days a week. <laughs> it's a couple months. <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you do it five days a week. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe we should try to get like a... Dude, I still... Well, go ahead. Well, I know we go back and rem- we, I know we go back and reminisce, but it is funny to look back at episode one and be like, "Oh, it's a disgrace." You know, <laughs> it was like, a- no, dude. It was a good, le- you know, like it's, we like we talk about failure is information, dude. We learned a lot from those first episodes. Yeah, dude. You know? Forget that. I'll even go to like the second. So then we got pretty good, and you were sitting down. And now when I look back at old episodes where you're sitting and not standing, it doesn't yeah. look it doesn't look as good to me either because you always so sean <laughs> normally now stands if you just listen and don't watch our youtube page but but like seeing you seated at a desk i'm like that's not the show <laughs> like it's just not the show anymore so <laughs> you grow man you grow <laughs> so great man. Yeah, man so great so congrats brother congrats yeah you too you too and i hey, want to do that i want to i want to bring in a special guest I'm one of my best friends in the world jay adams there he is jay <laughs> adams Jay, 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 and I are heading down to uh, our buddy Courtney West. Uh, his fiftieth birthday party. We got a bunch of us going down to golf oh, in Charlottesville, cool. Virginia. Yeah, our buddy Joe Basile put put this together. So we're driving down for the day and driving home tomorrow morning. So oh wow, that's like a that's like a travel an, tour continues. That's like an old man bachelor party, you know? <laughs> are, 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 are there, yeah, dude. I'm like, what time are we going to bed tonight? I'm like, what time are we going to bed? We're, we got to wake up early and get out of here. Yeah, you know, so incredible. I love it. Hey, by the way, speaking of which, we got that giveaway. We'll figure out what we're giving away, but you're going to sign something. I kind of threw you out there on that, but you will sign stuff. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm thinking is we keep that open. Let's keep it through the holiday weekend. Go to my Twitter page or Sean's Twitter page, and you'll see. Just prove that you follow and subscribe to our YouTube page, and you could win something. Signed by Sean Casey. We haven't figured it out yet, but it'll be not, it'll be a nice thing, I would assume. Oh yeah, something good. So at least a ball. How about a ball? A nice yeah, signed sure. ball. Sure, that's great. Yeah, Reds Hall of Famer. A man. signed big league dude. Big league baseball has cost forty bucks nowadays. I got a nice big league baseball <laughs> sign. That's crazy. Okay, that's at least a forty forty one dollar value. If I sign it, forty dollars plus one. Oh my god. Hey, well, I got a question for you. How much do you think an Otani signed baseball is these days? I'm saying it's going for 200. Isn't that crazy? Probably. Well, it's probably going for like 215 now because you let last night, dude, two home runs, 10 strikeouts, pitched, hit. <laughs> and we said it yesterday. I, I got to just start. I, I got to give us a little credit because we were saying like, hey, 60 might not be out of reach for this guy because he does hit homers in bunches, as we're seeing right now. And in the freaking 10 strikeouts as a starter, the day after he hit a homer the night before, I, like I don't know what more we can say about this guy. Yeah, it's incredible. We're, we're joking around about the Otani minute, and every day we we spend a few minutes on because he's doing something every night, dude. It's yeah. too much. And yesterday he came out of the game in like the seventh, I believe, with like a cracked fingernail, mm-hmm. and and they're like, oh, you know, he's gonna come out of the game. He came out of the game as a pitcher, stayed in his hitter, and homer. <laughs> it is second homer after the having the cracked fingernail. So. Dude, this guy is on another planet. Uh, I saw one of the coolest things. My buddy Ryan Johns. What's up, Johnsy? I know you're listening. So, Johnsy listens to the podcast. You know Johnsy. He sent me this thing with Will Middlebrooks, dude, on uh, on like TikTok or on his on Will Middlebrooks' podcast. He was breaking down two players. He says, okay, player A, player B. And he put up their stats, and the stats were phenomenal. Um, and, you know, you're like, wow, these are two really good players. So, you're kind of going through who they are. So, the one player – he pulls up is Otani. Like, mm. Wow, those are good numbers. And then he pulls up another the other player, and it's Mookie Betts. And you're like, wow, the compare the comparison is like, okay, that that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Then he pulls up two pitchers, dude. Looks like just very comparable, and they're, they're some of the best numbers in baseball over the last so many years. One of the pitchers is Otani. The other the other pitcher is Max Scherzer. So Otani is a mix between. Mookie Betts and Max Scherzer in one person, dude. Unbelievable. Like, and now, so here, let's do this exercise. You would pay Mookie Betts as a thirty million dollar a year player right now. Yeah. Yep. Max Scherzer yep. is a thirty million dollar pitcher right now. 
So you're basing your base, your basement salary for Shohei Otani next year should be no less than sixty million dollars per year. Sixty million. Now you're also like your big point that you consistently say you're saving a roster spot, right? right? Right. So let's put your base now. It's I feel like that gives you 15 million for a, a nice hardcore your setup guy. Okay. Right. So now he's worth seventy-five million dollars a year. I think base, dude. Seriously. <laughs> Well, yeah. How do you argue that? No, it, Does he it, get a hundred million dollars? It's a year? incredible. Do you give him five years, a hundred well, million a year? That might be a better contract. I, I think, I, I, dude. I think I'm not kidding you. I, is he the first seven hundred million dollar player? Yes, I can't is say no to anything because you have to think. You have to think when, dude. When they start to negotiate, you're going to get some teams that are going to come in and overpay. The guy's young. He's an international superstar. He's only getting better. Only getting he's only better. getting better when we're like, we're like Otani's going to win the MVP every year, what? and he's getting better. And, and did you hear what he said? I love this comment, and I just feel like, you know, it's such a cool comment from Otani. They were chanting MVP yesterday uh, out there in, in Anaheim, and and he uh, they asked him after the game what he thought about. It. He goes, he goes, it just makes me want to get better when I hear my, the fans. Chain that it just shows that I got to continue to get better every day, and I'm like, oh, I mean, when you have that thought process, when you're a guy like he is, I just love that. If I'm a fan of the Angels, I love to hear that. Yeah. Now l- let me. I'll dive even deeper into the numbers so we can start like that. That go along with the contract st- stuff. Okay. Let's just say you had a player on your roster right now who was hitting like 220 with like a 309 on base percentage. But they had 28 homers and 64 RBIs leading baseball. You'd be like, sign me up. I want you want that guy. You that guy will help win you a championship, right? Okay. It's like Kyle Schwarber. It's like a Kyle Schwarber. Okay. All right. So now add the fact that he's actually he's up to 304 batting average, Sean. And his on base percentage is 386. I'm not done. How about if that same guy that can be leading the league in home runs had eleven stolen bases right now? He's got 11 stolen bases. He could yeah. actually become like, you know how in the NBA there's a triple-double? I bet if he put his mind to it, he could lead the league in I, – I don't think anybody's ever led the league in homers, RBIs, and stolen bases. But I think if he wanted to run more, he could lead the league in stolen bases. Yeah. I really believe that. I, I, I think he could too. I think he could too. Th- that's why, you know, when you say that about him, what pops into my head is Ronald Acuna because – Acuna is doing stuff right now we haven't seen since Joe Morgan did Great back point. in the 70s. You know, I think he's got 35 bags. I think he's got close to 20 bombs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and when I – so when you say Otani, yeah. you know, I think one of the benchmarks that we've always said, some of the greatest players ever are in the 40-40 club, mm-hmm. which is so hard to do. Is Acuna, is Acuna a 50-50 guy? Is he going to be the first 50-50 guy? And could Otani do that if he wanted to? Exactly. Great question. <laughs> you know I mean, like, yeah, yeah. If Otani said, you know what? I'm going to start stealing bases because I want to be a 40 40 guy. Or, and like I said, with these new bigger bases, dude, guys are running at an epic rate. And you're seeing Acuna, this guy's going every game. Yeah. He's getting, uh, you know, one or two bags, it seems like it's incredible. Yeah. So I think that that 50 50 is not out of the realm dude th- 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 with the new bases bigger bases that's a great point I- i'll actually give a shout out to gary sheffield junior who uh is he's got a, he's got one of the best social media setups follow him by the way he's great on twitter he's great on yeah. instagram and he's yeah, I, follow, just, I do follow yeah. he's just as outspoken as as his dad so he says it how he feels but he yeah. made, he made a great point this morning he goes think about how good otani is that we have two gener- – he's just he's like, let me just pick two generational players that are playing in the big leagues right now. He mentioned Acuna, and he mentioned Judge, even though Judge is hurt right now. And he goes, but this guy is that much he's, – he's, he's a world – a whole world different because he's also a pitcher, but he's just as good of a hitter as those guys and maybe better right now at the moment. It's really – it's an unbelievable – we're living in a really good time for baseball right now. We really – really are lucky yeah. this is this is more like you know for the past we've had our great players and we put players on pedestals in the last five ten f- years 
but not the way I don't think the way we're seeing it right now. Because don't forget, like we don't even talk about Mike Trout that much anymore. We just barely talk about him. You know, the guy's arguably the best player in the last fifty years of baseball, and he's he's being overshadowed by his teammate. It's crazy, crazy stuff. Now, yeah, yeah, that's what, and that, and that's also on the last point here. That's why the Angels need to win because we need to see those guys uh, together in the postseason. Period. A. You saw, period. You saw what Otani yeah. did in the WBC when a lot of people were watching. So, right. What yeah. can him and Trout do on a national stage? You know what? Yeah. Oh, they get those stupid. Oh God, I hate the Thundersticks. I hate the Anaheim Thundersticks. I love the Thundersticks. I love the thundersticks. <laughs> but whatever. Okay, so now you mentioned Max Scherzer as a comp to the pitching Otani. Ugh, Mets. Scherzer has opened up saying he would be willing, if they are out of it, to be traded to a contending team. One, that says a lot about the Mets right now. Number two, though, what do you give up for Max Scherzer right now? Because I'm going to pull up his stats in a second, but we're still feeling out like where he is health-wise and, and dominance-wise. Yeah. So what's he worth to you on the open market? Okay, chin. Pull up, pull up Scherzer's numbers in the last, I think, five starts are a little better. Do you have them? I actually Something do have like his that. last five starts here. Okay. Uh, all right. Last five starts. Okay. I'll just give you the, the innings first. Seven innings, 5.2 innings, 3.1 innings, eight innings, six. Uh, in those games, let's see. He has – he's three and two. Uh, he's only up one bad game. I gotta be on. well. Mm, two bad games, three good games. Okay, he had two two games yeah. where he gave up. He gave up uh, five and one, five and five and two thirds. Then he gave up six and three and a third. But sandwich in between that, he put seven game, seven innings, nine Ks. He's also got an eight innings, eight K game, and then he has a six oh. inning, eight K game in his last five. So, okay. yes. So for me, dude, at the end of the day, if you're if you're going to need front line starting pitching to win this whole thing, mm-hmm. so you know if you're in it, you know at the end of the day, if you're you're a team that has prospects, and you know a team that a team that you know can get can make some deals for a guy like Scherzer, I mean you got to do it because even in those numbers, eight innings, eight punch, he's like this guy's still a workhorse, and on any given day he can shut down. Any, any of the best teams. So, and like, I understand what he's saying too about, hey, he'd be willing to get traded. Like, he's at the end of his career. Mm-hmm. Like, so, like, every year matters. So, if, if the Mets are out of it, he would do anything to get a ring. And that's, that's your point. So, right. you know, that's what he wants. He well, wants that's that why ring. he, the reason he is a Met is because he thought they had the best chance to get him a ring this year for the most part, you know, in the last yeah. couple of years. Um, all right. So, let me get into the standings right now. And you, I'll start rattling off teams, and you tell me fit or no fit. How's that? Like deal or no deal? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's. I'm just gonna go down the list from from top to bottom. AL East, Tampa. Do they need him? Um, if McClanahan comes back, you know, I, I think I think it, obviously he needs to be a nice fit there, but I think they have enough without him. Okay, Baltimore. Without having to give up, guys. Baltimore. That would be dude. Baltimore would be a guy. They have a ton of prospects. Mm-hmm. They have guys they could probably push. The, uh, you know, and you're going to add um, into that rotation with, with some of those young guys like the Grayson Rodriguez's of the world. You're going to add a Max Scherzer who brings not only you know veteran leadership, but he also brings a, you know a pedigree and uh, for postseason play. And yeah, it's a great fit. Gotcha. All right, the next three teams I'm going to bundle because they're all kind of in the same place. Boston's a little behind, but. Yankees, Blue Jays, Red Sox, any of those three teams, and which one would he fit best with? Or none? Well, the, uh, I think the Blue Jays, you know, because with Alec Manoa, you know, did you see Alec Manoa oh. the other day in an A, in a a ball game, gave up 11 runs? Yeah, in two innings. 10 hits, 11, 10 hits, 11 runs. Yeah, so yeah. he's not right. I mean, and, and he's the guy we talked about, hey, man, the Blue Jays have a shot with Manoa having a chance to win the Cy Young. All of a sudden, mm. he's not going to win the Cy Young. He might win Bill Young, you know, but the, the Cy Young, no <laughs> chance. Young. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they need another starter, so a guy like Scherzer would, would make sense. Okay. I want to pull together two central teams, Minnesota and Cleveland. Does he fit with one, either, or neither? I mean, obviously he fits with 
I mean, the Twins probably make more sense, right. um, you know, because they have some good pitching right now. But um, he would fit more there, I think. Gotcha. Okay. Let's go. What? Oh, this is fun. Right now, the AL West, you have Texas and the Angels and then Houston. I don't know. I'm not going to put Seattle in there yet, but which of those three teams, if any, or if all? Well, I think that the team you'd like to see them go is the Angels because, you know, that would add another frontline starter into that rotation. Because mm-hmm. when I look at the Rangers, dude, with the Grom, even with the Grom being down, they have enough in that rotation. Right. The way Dunning's been pitching, you know, the way Valdi, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty loaded. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say he, he fits uh, – that's with the Angels. All right. Excuse me. Bless you. Bless you, bro. Sorry, guys. Bless you. Three, 300 episodes. I started losing my uh, metabolism. <laughs> All right. Stu's, um, Stu's giving you cat allergies. He so. totally is. All right. So, wait. Did we do NLEs yet? I just sneezed. No. All oh, this is fun. I'm going to go Braves. I'm going to go Miami. I'm not putting Philly in there yet. They're 10 and a half back. They're, they still got to fight. But Braves or Miami? Or neither. I kind of like him in Philly, to tell you the truth. <laughs> do you, yeah, right. Philly isn't a wild card. I do kind of like him in Philly. He looks like a Philly. He kind of looks like he should be wearing yeah, a Philly. Yeah, dude. The Philly, the Philly fans would love shirts, dude. He's got you know, two two eyes that just are, are different colors. He <laughs> yeah. comes in just, <clears throat> you know, animal. So nice. they'd love him in Philly. Um, I think the Braves have enough. Mm-hmm. And who was the other team you said? Braves, Miami. Miami. Well, dude, they got good pitching, man. Perez, Alcantara, all those guys. Yeah, so they don't They're need They're loaded. Okay, now we go to an interesting place. Bundled up in the NL Central. As horrible as the Pirates are playing, they're only five games back. So I'm going to go Cincinnati, Milwaukee, Chicago, or Pittsburgh. Any or all, does he fit? Cincinnati, Milwaukee. Well, dude, he would be great in Cincinnati because <sighs> they, have a, they have some prospects they could give. He would be great to come into that young rotation. The, the place that the Reds are looking to go to the next level is really that rotation. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been banged up. Uh, they've been banged up uh, injury-wise with Green down. Lodolo's been down. Ashcraft's back. But it's been lights out, dude. Last night again, Oof. just coming out. They won 3-1. He's but legit. not giving any. Dude, he's not giving any leeway to anybody, man. This guy is legit. He is down in the awesome. zone, you know. Perfect mechanics. Um, so uh, he would be a great fit there, though, especially with that young rotation. Yeah. And plus, doesn't that give you that? I mean, everybody's behind the Reds right now, but doesn't that tell your team, especially you got young guys on your team? Well, we're bringing in one of the best players of our generation. That's how much we care. That's how much we oh. believe we can oh, go yeah. to that next level this year. That means something, right? Psychologically. Dude, dude, I remember with the 99 Reds, you know, we were we were right where we needed to be, and Jim Bowden went out and traded B.J. Ryan, who became one of the best closers for a long time, who was a top prospect at the time. B.J. Ryan for Juan Guzman from the Blue Jays. Oh, yeah. And, dude, Juan Guzman dominated down the stretch. It was a great trade, and it sent a message to all of us, hey, we're in this, let's go, let's buckle up. So you're right, man. It, it, for, the, for the Reds or anybody that, uh, you know, get a guy like Scherzer, it sends a big message to that clubhouse. All right. Now let's go out west. Again, Arizona, another – Arizona, we've established last night, have proved that they are a legit title contender. You got Arizona. They're two and a half games up on San Fran. Yeah. And then you got the Dodgers three games back. I'll put I'll put all three into the, into the mix for you. Well – he was, you know, start off in Arizona. That would probably be pretty cool to see him oh, maybe back. finish in Arizona while they're good too. Right. You're right. Yeah. Corbin Carroll solidified him himself last night with that three run bomb. They, they big opening win against the Rays. Longo goes deep. Um, they're legit. So that'd be cool to see Scherzer back in Arizona, man. Mm-hmm. Where it's where I think where that's where it all started for him. Yeah, it was right. We forget about that because yeah. it's been so long. It's been such a journeyman. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, there we have it. Um, oh, what I was going to tell you. Did I say this earlier? I don't remember because we broke up for a second. We're going to keep the – let's keep the giveaway going until the 5th of July. So go on our Twitter pages and prove that you're on liking and subscribing to our YouTube account. And you're going to get something signed yes. from Sean All Casey. Right. Signed 5th ball. of July. 5th of July. All right. 
All right, man. What do you do? Are you all right? Are you you right. are you actually golfing today, or are you going there and chilling out? And then, and uh, then... yeah, we're golfing. No, no. We're right when we get there. We're go- literally we're gonna drive up, change, and golf. Nice, nice. That TMO. And you know how good, good I, and, and, you, and you know how much I love golf too. <laughs> Jay Jay golfs Jay golfs eight days a week, so he's gonna be he's gonna be legit <laughs> spinning. It. We're gonna stretch out a little bit first. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, nice. Yeah, we're gonna, nice. That's the first thing we're gonna stretch do. out the hips first. We just got out of the gas station. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> dislocated hips. It's been an everywhere. interesting ride. It's been an interesting ride so far. <laughs> All right. Well. I, le- I I'll tell you what happened. I left my phone at the rest area in the bathroom. Oh About no! 10 mi- we got ten minutes outside. Jay's like, "What? Put the ways on." I go to put the ways on. I was like, "We got to turn around, bro." I left the phone. At the- oh. <laughs> the phone in the bathroom, at the- in the uh, the stall. Wow! I'm shocked so, nobody took it. Turn- right on the turn on the turnpike, dude. It, it got dicey. Wow, so you were in a stall. So you got you you drop a you drop a deuce in, in a gas station bathroom. Is that what happens? With the case, bro. When you got the morning, you got to do what you got to do. It sometimes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and at the and at the end of the at the end of the day, too, what happened was I pulled up. You know, you have so many scenarios going through your head. I and I have my my I have used my phone as my wallet too. So all my credit cards, oh my, God. my my license. So I'm like, so you got <laughs> you're thinking of the two people that can grab your phone. The one dude that's a crook, he takes all your credit cards, your ID, he takes your phone, you know what I mean? And, and then, then you think of the guy that's a, just a good Samaritan, he goes in there, he may have had a couple too much coffee, he sees my phone, he's like, oh, this guy left his, uh, you know, left his phone. <laughs> so, dude, we, we, rip, we whip back, we're about, boom, we turn around, Jay's on his phone, trying to figure out, you know, where the hell we're supposed to go, Google uh-huh. mapping it, where's the, where's the rest stop? So we get back, dude, I pull in. Pull in, and as we pull in, there's a guy waving my phone. I'm like, "How does this guy know that?" What? So it turns out Jillian had called me, dude. <laughs> the guy answered the phone. He's like, and she's like, "Dad." <laughs> and the guy's like, "Hello." Oh golly, gee, so, so like, "Dad." He's like, "No, what's your dad's name?" He's like, "Sean." So, so Jillian was talking to this guy, and the guy, the guy, and she goes, "What kind of car does your dad have?" He goes. A black Audi. So we were pulling in right when he was outside. So he starts waving the phone. He's like, hey, you got a call, man. I go, bro, first off, thank you so much. You're uh, the good Samaritan I was thinking about. Appreciate you being honest. And, you know, and then and then I, I, I grabbed the phone from the stranger. I'm like, hello? And Jillian's like, hey, dad, did you leave your phone in the bathroom? I'm like, yeah, I did. That's funny. But my final question, did this guy recognize you as Sean Casey baseball player? No, dude, dude, I don't Why? get recognized. I don't get How recognized. How is this happening? No, Jay, do I get recognized a lot? Not really. In Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, <laughs> yeah. No, they know me as the WDB radio guy. Right. Like, did you Sean Casey on the radio? I'm like, you know it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. We were, right. were so excited about the uh, – we were, we were so excited about getting the phone back. We got back in the car and drove out. Without getting gas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the same rest stop twice, didn't get gas, and then needed to stop 20 miles later to get gas. <laughs> perfect. Perfect yeah. start. So Jay, Jay goes, hey, you got gas. Jay goes, we're at the gas gauge. I look over and go, we got 30 miles to empty. I'm like, we've been at the rest area twice. <laughs> We, you know, it's incredible. So then we had to st- pull off yeah. again to get some gas. Yeah, so yeah. hey, it's it's like we're back in college. It's yeah, like there the you adventure go. Yeah, no. right. Jay and I roomed together four years of college. So we've already had we've already had these adventures. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, I got Stu attacking me right now, so I'm gonna bounce. I'll leave you to that. We'll catch up tomorrow. We'll find Stu, out. Stu, what the got. hell? He's all over me right now. This is probably why I'm. Sneezing. All right, man. Yeah, we'll catch up tomorrow. Hey, everybody, everybody out there, th- thanks for listening, and you too, Stu. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Love you, brother. Love you, brother. Talk to you. <laughs> Happy 300. You we'll be driving back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I have a feeling I'm going to be in the same spot. <laughs> yeah, we might, see, yeah, we right. might see this show tomorrow. <laughs> Just have a lot of different clothes on. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> nice. All right. See you guys. Have fun. All right, Chasey. Love, love you, buddy. Thanks, man. Nice. That was great. All right, bro. Awesome. Oh awesome, God, buddy. Okay, have a good, re- good rest of the day, bud. All right, you too. Bye, buddy. See you. Stu. Stu. <laughs> see you. Recording stuff.